Hey, hey, Warrior Saints, glad to have you beautiful people in with us today as we continue our discussion. And as promised, I told you yesterday we're going to talk today about distractions. And we are, in fact, as I'm distracted, I am so sorry. Hold on one second. Hello? Yeah. All right. Yeah, I'm in the middle of something right now. Let me call you right back. All right. Sorry about that. Um, so we're talk what were we talking about? I totally lost my train of thought. I'm just kidding. That was all staged. I bet you didn't know that. Anyway, we're talking about distractions because they are a real thing. And it's Father Chris sometimes talk about. We have weapons of mass distraction sitting in our pockets all the time. With these weapons of mass distraction, we're able to get onto the interwebs of distraction and we're able to go out there and we're able to get into all this crazy stuff i'm going to talk to you about something that i actually saw on the interwebs of mass distraction um earlier this week and i i, I you know it seemed pretty apropos as we are in the midst of a, another political cycle, which is dominating the news and dominating our ads and dominating our text messages and dominating our thoughts and our brains. And it was pretty interesting. This is an excerpt from Screw Tape Letters. So I'm going to read it to you now. Christian's going to help me out by popping it on the screen. My dear Wormwood, be sure that the patient remains completely fixated on politics. Arguments, political gossip, and obsessing on the faults of people they have never met serves as an excellent distraction from advancing in personal virtue, character, and the things the patient can control. Make sure to keep the patient in a constant state of angst, frustration, general disdain towards the rest of the human race in order to avoid any kind of charity or inner peace from further developing. Ensure that the patient continues to believe that the problem is out there in the broken system rather than recognizing there is a problem with himself. Keep up the good work, Uncle Screwtape, 1942. Now, this is pretty crazy because it like hits home, right? This is kind of what we're in the middle of. What was really fascinating to me was instead of hearing the message that was being portrayed by this meme and the people that were sharing the meme, what ensued was 42 messages attacking the person who had posted it saying, this is fake. This is not from the actual screw tape letters. Don't believe this. This is not from the screw tape letters. This is this is a forgery and it goes around every 4 years and it's and it's and it's crazy and it shouldn't be there and all of and I started cracking up because the people doing that completely missed the point. Now, for those of you not familiar with screw tape letters, it is a series of letters that C.S. Lewis wrote that are between um, two devils. And the uncle, screw tape, is writing to his nephew, Wormwood, who is just starting out in the field. Now, what I am going to read to you is from the actual screw tape letters, and it is from letter one. And it is excerpts from a section where screw tape is telling wormwood about an interaction he had with someone who was there thinking and the dangers that come from letting people think and what he did as a result to get around it the first part is i was not such a fool i struck instantly at the part of the man which i had best under my control and suggested that it was just about time to eat some lunch he goes on to say that the guy and uh, uh, then immediately was, was presented with the angel and the devil on the shoulders. And the angel was telling him, you're not hungry. Just keep thinking along this path. It's going to bring you to God, blah, blah, blah. And he goes on. Once he was in the street, sorry, excuse me. I had added much better come back after lunch and go into it with a fresh mind. He was already out halfway out the door. Once he was in the street, the battle was won. I showed him a newsboy shouting the midday paper and a number 73 bus going past. Before he reached the bottom of the steps, I had gotten into him an unalterable conviction that whatever odd ideas might come into a man's head when he was shut up alone with his books, a healthy dose of real life was enough to show him that all that sort of thing just couldn't be true. What's he talking about? He's talking about distraction. 
Just like the fake screw tape letter is talking about distraction and the political distractions that are going on and how it's there to draw us in and to pull us away from having ideas and actually focusing on the things that we are called to focus on as warrior saints. Hashtag I am a warrior saint. This guy is saying in the actual screw tape letters, the same thing from the very beginning of the screw tape letters. The theme that runs throughout the whole idea is that distractions keep us from the church. He even uses the phrase, distractions will keep you from the church at another point in that first letter. This isn't just about C.S. Lewis, though. This is something we see in scripture itself, right? Think about on Monday, Father Chris talked about the encounter between Christ and the two sisters, Mary and Martha, and that he enters into Martha's house and she is worried about serving. And her sister, Mary, on the other hand, was sitting at the feet of the master. Now, what does it mean to sit at the feet of the master? It means that you are sitting there being taught. He is elevated, the teacher, and the, it's, it's, it's a very um, traditional idea in the way that, that thought is transmitted. We also see this in Platonic thought, where we talk about, you know, they talk about Socrates at the feet of Plato or vice versa. I'm not really sure about philosophy too much. But it goes on, and Martha is upset, and she says to the Lord, aren't you going to tell her to help me? And he says something fascinating. Martha, Martha, you are anxious and distracted by many things, but Mary has chosen the good portion and it will not be taken away from her. Mary has chosen wisely, if you're a fan of Indiana Jones. She has chosen the good portion. She is choosing to sit at the feet of the master and to be taught, to not be distracted by all the other things that pull against us, that rage against us, that jump into our news feeds, that jump into our, our lives via our phones so that we can actually find a way that we can actually get to a place where we are able to hear what the Lord is telling us. We see this in, in the story of Elijah. It's all over the place, right? But I'm going to talk about Elijah, and, and we're not going to pump this on the screen because I didn't put it into the, the, the computer program that pumps things on the screen. But we see it in Elijah very clearly, where he is looking for the voice of God. And he doesn't hear it in the mighty wind. He doesn't hear it in the earthquake. He doesn't hear it in the storm. But after all of that passes away, he hears it where? In the still, small voice. So amidst all of the distractions that we are having, and the distractions that come as we're reading something that is telling us to not be bogged down by the distractions even, i.e. the fake screw tape letter thing, we are called to fight through all of that, to find and seek out the still, small voice, of a God who is calling us to be a warrior saint, to follow his path that is the path of crucifixional living, and as always, to keep walking on the way of the warrior saint.